Hi, my name is Heather Burns and I am the Director of Education and Programming here at the Canadian College of Performing Arts. Um, we're just going to spend a bit of time today talking about auditions and what that looks like from the perspective of the person approaching auditions with maybe experience and maybe not experience and also give you a little insight into what it is that we on the other side of the table are sometimes looking for. So auditioning is one of those kind of intimidating, somewhat daunting experiences that all performers have to go through and I think going into the audition room is sometimes one of the more challenging steps to that big moment on center stage that you hope you're going to have. Um, knowing that, uh, it is also something that everybody has to do and everybody keeps doing for their whole career, generally speaking. It's a skill like anything else, and so in the same way that you work on your singing and you work on your dancing and you work on your acting skills, um, it's really good to practice your auditioning skills. And so hopefully today, in this short period of time that we're going to be together, we'll give you some skills to demystify some of what that is and um, give you some things that you can think about and prepare yourself for going into the audition room. Hi. Uh, my name is Caleb Marshall. I'm the Managing Artistic Director at the Canadian College of Performing Arts. And in my career, I've had the pleasure to audition thousands of emerging and professional actors over the years. And here's some tips that you might want to take into consideration. And while we're going to talk about the preparation you need to do in advance and some of the things you might want to think about when you're in the audition room, your audition actually starts in the waiting room when you arrive. Your job is to be yourself, but your best self. And your best self means that you arrive early, you're never late, that you don't get impatient if they're running a little bit behind. Use the time to stay calm and focused, get yourself centered, and be aware that you're not distracting the other people that are waiting or potentially the greeter. Be kind, be friendly, uh, don't talk on the phone, don't rehearse too loudly. Uh, it's, a, it's a common space where everybody needs to uh, have a chance to get focused. Always bring your photo and CV, even if you think they already have a copy of it. And it would be useful if you also bring a water bottle in with you, just in case those nerves dry you out. When you enter the space, it's not just about talent. It's about professionalism and confidence. Approach the table, make eye contact, greet them in a friendly manner, offer your photo and resume. Be prepared to shake a hand if it's offered, but don't get thrown if it isn't. Be prepared to have a little chat and answer some questions, but don't get thrown if they don't have time. They may be running behind. Follow their lead. Before you begin, you're going to introduce what pieces you're doing. What's the name of the, the play and who wrote it? If a very brief context to understand what's going on is required, do that, but try to keep it as succinct and simple as possible. The pieces you choose should be standalone and not require a whole lot of explanation. If you have questions, there might be time for some thoughtful discussion, but make sure they're not questions you could have easily found the answer to in your online research. If you're unclear about some pronunciation, if you've been given a piece to do, feel free to ask. The most important thing to remember at this stage is don't make excuses. If you're not feeling well or you haven't had time to prepare, the panel isn't really interested. They're more interested in what you can do right here, right now. If you're under the weather, we can see that and we're more impressed that you dive in and commit to it regardless. Let's talk a little bit about your preparation in advance of the audition. Now, we just talked about selecting pieces that are standalone, sort of self-contained, that they can tell a journey and a story without too much explanation and context required. One of the number one questions I'm often asked, and you'll see this in a lot of general auditions, is contrasting. Two contrasting pieces. What does contrasting mean? Well, in its simplest form, and the number one way people view it often is that it means two different styles. One's comedy, one's drama. That's one way of looking at it, and that's not untrue. But also think about it as two different people, two different characters that are going through two different things. Not the same character in a comedy and the same character in a drama. Make some bold choices in that regard. The other thing is, is different uses of physicality and contrasting uses of the space. If one of your monologues is very still and seated, then the other one has to move and use the space and get into your body. But most importantly, read the play. Don't just pick a monologue. You won't be accurate to the monologue if you don't understand the entire context and journey that the character is going through. Keep your audition monologues short, manageable. If you have too much text to memorize, you're going to focus too much on the memorization and not as much on delving into choices and discussion and thoughts and realizations about the character and the choices that you should make. 
Don't get too gimmicky. If one essential prop is required, that's fine, but no more than that. And dress appropriately. That doesn't mean wear a costume. It means create the silhouette that the character would have. If I was auditioning for a business person, I'd wear a suit jacket. If I'm not auditioning for a business person, and I'm a father who's home on the weekend, I'm not going to create the silhouette that confuses that. Don't make them work too hard. Help their imagination in seeing you in the role. After you've introduced your pieces and you're about to start, sometimes people aren't sure how close, how far, or where to stand. Stand far enough away from the table so that they can see your entire body and you, how much you may or may not you choose to use the space. People often ask, who do I look at? What do I look at? Don't look directly at the panel. That makes them your acting partner. And they don't want to be in the scene with you. They want to be able to watch the scene. What's most important is that you have a very clear image of who you're talking to, what you want from them, and physically place that image somewhere in the room. If there's windows in your space, the world that you're creating, make sure you can paint the picture. You're not looking at the room you've walked into, you're looking at the room you've created for yourself. As you're about to begin, don't make a big deal about preparing in front of the panel. Just drop in and do it. Make a strong, bold choice. Usually the panel can tell within about 10 or 15 seconds if you're connected to the material. Don't find your way to slowly work yourself into it. You need to drop in, start clear, start strong, which may require making a bold choice. I can't tell you how many monologues I've seen where people just sit still through the entire time. Now, sometimes seating is required, but try to find the way to get into your body, use the space. Even people that are standing sometimes are just a talking head. We want to see how you can inhabit the character and get into your body. Now, using the space does not mean just meandering around while you're talking. It means using your impulses to make choices, move, connect your body to the text. We want to see if you can inhabit the character in your whole body, so that's going to require some physical movement. Once you've finished your pieces, it's likely that you'll get some direction. Take direction with grace. If the panel's interested in offering you direction, that means they like what they saw and they want to see more. They also want to see if you've locked into your choices so much that you're not malleable. They want to see if you can try different things, if you're directable. Direction is not correction. Don't take it personally. It means they want to invest more time and interest in the work that you're doing. While every audition panel may be looking for something different, I can guarantee one of the number one things they're looking for is, have you entered with confidence and energy? Did you do your homework? Are you prepared? Did you make some bold choices? And did you come in with an enthusiasm and a professionalism that makes you somebody they want to work with? Here at the college, we're a multidisciplinary performing arts institution, which means we offer intensive training in acting, singing, and dance. That does not mean that you have to come to the college as an expert in all three of those areas. You may have explored one and had interest and some experience in the other and may have never touched one of those in your life. That's fine. We're looking for the potential. We make choices based on somebody who shows real great potential in two of those three areas. So if you've never danced, don't worry. If you've danced your whole life, there's a place for you as well. You'll be put at the appropriate level of the college that matches your experience. So don't let the dance audition, or the singing audition, or the acting audition intimidate you. Just dive in, do your best, commit, and make some choices. We look forward to meeting you. Hi, we're Jeremy and Tiffany Mitten. We're two of the dance instructors here at the Canadian College of Performing Arts. We're going to take a few minutes to talk you through what to expect in submitting your dance reel for the college. We're going to give you some helpful information to get you started, and hopefully that'll get you on the road. First thing is, you want to make sure that you have a nice big space to dance in, and also for your attire. Make sure that you're not, we don't want costumes and we don't need um, baggy clothes. We want to have you in fitted clothes so we can see where your body placement is. And also, if you don't have the correct shoes, that's okay, we just want to see what you've got. To help us properly assess your level and your potential, we're going to talk you through three basic exercises in three different genres. Ballet, jazz, and tap. Feel free to watch these and use these in your audition to show us how you move. You have up to three minutes to demonstrate three different genres. So you have a minute for each genre, or 30 seconds, whatever you have to showcase uh, your danceability. 
Uh, if you can choose between ballet, tap, jazz, contemporary, anything else that you have, if, you have a, if you're a great hip hop dancer, you're tumbling, whatever you have, just show us what you've got, just so we can see your musicality and all of your skills. And here is a simple pirouette exercise. Out, prepare, and balance, slow it down. Out, prepare, and balance, slow it down. Out, prepare, single turn, and land. Out, prepare, single turn, and land. So not forgetting that in jazz, we are parallel. And prepare, and balance, lower down. Out, prepare, balance, lower down. Out, prepare, single turn, lower down. Out, prepare, single turn, lower down. Here is a simple chenet exercise. Down and up. Down and up. And down. Up, up, up. Down. Up, up, up. Repeat. And up. Repeat. And up. And in. So, for your first tap combination, we're going to talk you through a time step progression. You can show us either one, two, or all of these based on your level of comfort. I'll talk you through the steps so you know what you're doing and then give you a demonstration. They're going to start with a day. You're going on eight. Push up, step, go up, step, eight. Push up, step, go up, step, dig. You put double with two flaps. Push up, go up, go up, step, dig. Push up, go up, go up, step, dig. Replace the first flap with a shuffle for a triple time step. Push up, double step, go up, step, dig. Push up, shuffle, step, go up, step, dig. In the last round, add two shuffles in and take your flaps out. That is a hole. You're going to go. And most importantly, guys, if what you just saw still seems too daunting for you, don't get intimidated. Feel free to just put on music and show us how you use your body and the rhythm to tell a story. Let us see your individualism and your personality shine through. And most importantly, just have fun. A lot of times people will come into an audition and say, oh, I prefer to do that a cappella. I don't actually recommend that for people. If you have the opportunity to have an accompanist with you that you know, bring that person with you. If they're willing to come, there's no better way to ensure a good, strong audition than to bring the person that you've been working into the room with you. Most audition panels will be completely fine and will actually respect the fact that you brought somebody that you know can help you get through the audition really well. Um, if you're unable to do that and there is an accompanist provided, like I said, make sure you bring your music, have it highlighted, have it clear where the beginning is, have it clear where the jumps are, and take that opportunity when you walk into the room to make a really strong connection with the accompanist in the room. You should be able to tell them in words exactly where you need them to play, where you need them to make the jumps, and then probably even take a couple of seconds just to run over the introduction so you know exactly what it is that you are both going to be doing when you go to start your song. One of the first steps in preparing your audition is going to be choosing the material. And a lot of people wonder, what do I choose? What should I be singing? Uh, we at the Canadian College of Performing Arts are a musical theater school. Generally speaking, if you're doing an audition for musical theater, you want to make sure that you present at least something from the genre of musical theater. So I always suggest make sure you've gone and done your homework, done your research as to what it is that you're auditioning for, and go out and learn something that you can say is identifiably for musical theatre. If you have a bunch of those options in your back pocket, uh, in our case, we often ask for two contrasting songs. And so what does contrasting song mean? Um, generally, contrasting in style. So it might be an up-tempo song and then a, a slow ballad. Or it might be a piece that is really character driven and then a piece that is a lot more musically, lyrically, melodically driven. Uh, it could be a piece that showcases 
the high end of your range and then another piece that showcases the lower end of your range. Or it could be a piece that allows you to explore more of your head voice and more of a classical style and then something that shows that you have a really strong belt. Those are all great examples of ways that you can use contrasting musical themes in a piece of music to show us contrasting styles. Once you've got your material picked, I think if you have a bunch of things to choose from, people are like, I don't know, what song should I choose? It could be this or that. I always say, choose the piece of music that you love the most. Bring the piece of music into an audition that you enjoy singing the most, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna convey that enjoyment through the performance, and we're gonna see a lot more of you through that. Um, I would definitely not recommend ever doing an audition with a brand new piece of music. Nerves are the thing that basically undermines all of our greatest successes and there's probably no more nerves than in a small audition room singing in front of three people. So I really suggest the more you know the material, the more familiar you are with the material, the way more successful that audition is going to be. I've heard lots of stories of people that changed their mind the night before an audition and decided to do that new song that they love so much and the success rate on that choice is pretty low. So make sure you have material ready for you that you can pull out easily and perform, but that it is also material that you really love and that you really enjoy performing. Once you have your song picked, you know it's something you know well, it's something that you love, you've had a chance to go to the store and get yourself some music that will represent you and the song well and the key that you need to sing it in. You've made your cuts, you've got yourself ready to go in the room, uh, you've come in and introduced yourself, you're all at ease, the next step is for you to actually deliver the performance. Um, so a few tips on that, questions that get asked often. Where do I look? Where should I deliver my song to? I like to think of um, music in three different styles of performing or three different point of views of performing. You can be singing a song that is more of a pin spot or a song that is directed to one person. You can sing a song that is more directed to the room or to the universe, or you can be singing a song that is very introspective and inside of you. Uh, it's a really good idea for you to know which of those songs you're performing, which is going to help you to know where do you perform. If you're doing a song more of a pin spot song or a song where you're engaging with another person in the song, um, have that person right there in your mind in your audition with you and deliver that song to them. In the case of theater auditions, we understand that you're performing in generally a scene with other people. In the audition room, you may not have those other people, but we are looking to see how do you handle that kind of material. So if you are delivering a song to another person in the story of your character, find that other person, put them somewhere in the scene with you, and deliver the song to them. On occasion, do deliver outward though, so that your whole audition isn't done you know, side to side. Uh, be cautious about delivering with your back to the panel. It isn't that you can't ever do that, but make sure that that's a specific choice. And again, that you're allowing yourself that opportunity to sing forward from time to time. If you're delivering a song that is more outward or to a group of people, out to the universe, that's a great opportunity for center stage moments. You want to find your eye line just over the shoulder of the panel. You don't ever want to make direct eye contact with the panel. That can be a really challenging and awkward moment for both you and the people on the panel. So make sure that you're looking just over their shoulder. It keeps your eye line sort of near them where you're not staring above them, but it allows you to sort of engage directly where the people can see you in your strongest moments. The other sort of song or genre that we've talked about is more the soliloquy, the type of style of song where you're singing more to yourself or singing in your own thoughts. Those are great to show some really good, strong connection to character. You want to be careful when doing those types of pieces, uh, not to close your eyes. And if you do, that they're closed for a very short period of time, because when you close your eyes off to the people, we stop seeing you. So you want to make sure that that also remains open, that you remain open to your panel. The other thing you want to think about and be really cautious of is singing downward. As soon as you take your gaze down, again, we lose you. And we really want to see you in an audition as well as hear you. So keeping your gaze up, your thoughts inward, can really show a strong sense of acting and connection to your character. One of the things that you will hear us talk a lot about at CCPA is your breath. And your breath is your best friend. It is your greatest support and it is the thing that you can have complete control over. It is the thing that is going to essentially fuel all that you need to do from spoken text to singing. So it's really important to breathe and although that sounds like a really basic technique, it's something that usually we forget first. So you want to make sure that you're really connected to your breath and that you use that breath in an audition. 
Uh, before you begin your performance, always give yourself a couple of really nice, strong, deep breaths to ground you and get yourself supported for whether you're going to speak your monologue or sing your song. The other thing I like to say is take the time and make sure that in those moments in the music you know exactly where you need to breathe to deliver the strongest big note at the end or the longest long note so that you feel really supported and that those nerves again don't undermine uh, your sense of strength and confidence within your piece. So always coming back to your breath is a really important thing. The other thing that you always want to think about, it is about the musical, it is about the song, it is about pitch, it is about tone, and all of those things when we're thinking about you as a singer. But really what we want to know, and especially in musical theatre, is who is the character and what is the story that you are telling. So the best success that you can have with a musical theatre piece of music is to connect yourself to your text. Know your lyrics, know the story, and focus on that so that when you get into that audition room, you immediately start thinking about the story that you're singing, and you will find nine times out of ten that your nerves also leave because you are now thinking about the material you're doing and much less about the room that you are in. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, should I dress the part that I'm auditioning for? Um, I always say you want to be really careful about being too specific in your presentation, especially if you're doing more of a general audition. So I always say dress professionally, dress comfortably, but don't give too much weight to the character of what you're performing so that we're still able to see you through your performance. Um, a lot of times people may come in with specific props and if those things will help you, that's certainly fine. But really at the end of the day, the audition is gonna come down to you, your connection to the music, and your connection to the story that your character is singing about. Um, you want to also use the opportunity to show us as many sides of you as possible. So if you are a dancer, find ways to incorporate music and physicality and maybe a small dance break into your song so that in addition to seeing and hearing your voice and your character, we also can see that, oh, she's a dancer or he's a dancer or there's a sense of movement about you. You want to choose movement carefully, but you want to make sure that you do have a sense of physicality connected to the song. Know the rhythm of the song and allow your body to be kind of grounded in that rhythm and tempo of the song, which will relax you and will put you inside the material also in a greater way. A few little tricks, things that can help you in the moment. I always like to say have a cue line or something that you're going to say to yourself before you start to sing. Something that will trigger your response in the song. It doesn't have to be from the play or specific song that you're choosing, but just an, a cue line that you're going to tell yourself that gives your character a reason to sing what they sing. I always like to say as well that you want to think about giving us character, giving us movement, giving us story, but at the end of the day, give us you. So make sure that the things in your music that are your strongest points are the things that we are both introduced to first and left with. So put your strongest at the beginning, put your strongest finish at the end. Those are the things that we will remember the most. Um, if you have that really high C or that really low G is that alto note that you can deliver, make sure that we know that and that we have a chance to hear that, that you've given us those moments with strength and with confidence so that we get a chance to see what your best self is. Be really careful in your movement choices in a piece that you keep them simple, um, that you're not filling every phrase with a sense of physicality that's pulling us all over the room. You can make really, really strong and simple choices by perhaps connecting to the mood. If you're singing an anthem or something with great confidence, maybe it's defiance or maybe it's assertiveness that you can play and you can take a physical stance that will show us that, that will show us that you're physically connected. If you're doing something more comedic, you can find a few beats within that to give us something physically that is fun and enjoyable. They don't have to be complicated choices and you don't want your movements to overtake the actual singing of your material. You want those things to support and to accent the song. Sometimes you'll be called in to do an audition and perhaps you're not a singer. That isn't your background and that isn't your training. And oftentimes people walk in and feel like they don't really know what to do. My advice to those of you that perhaps are not strong singers or trained singers or maybe don't believe fully in your voice is to first step, believe that you can still give us something that we can enjoy. We just need to hear you singing or attempting to sing something. 
In that case, pick the simplest, most easy, understood songs. It can be anything from Happy Birthday, perhaps O Canada, perhaps just a gentle folk song that you might remember or a kid's song that you remember. Something that's going to give us 10 to 12 bars of music that will just let us hear your voice. If that's a daunting task for you, again, think about breathing, think about speaking, and think about taking your speaking voice and adding a little bit of pitch and melody to it. This is where getting together with an accompanist or with somebody who has a musical background ahead of, can give you just a little bit of advice or allow you to sing through something once or twice to give you that confidence that you need just to come in and show us that if nothing else you're willing to attempt the singing and willing to attempt perhaps an opportunity to learn and develop your voice. So your audition is over, you've prepared, you feel really good about it, you've gotten to the end of it and one of the things that people are the least uncertain on how to approach is actually leaving the audition. So after your material is finished, the best thing that you can do, finish confidently, take a moment to acknowledge that you are finished, take a moment to acknowledge thank you over to your accompanist if you're using one in the room, um, and then just allow the panel to sort of release you from that moment. Generally, they will say thank you and let you know if they want to hear something more or they will say thank you and let you know you can leave. Sometimes they will just say thank you and there'll be a moment of pause and you can say, is that everything? They will answer the question. You can collect your things and leave. At the end of the day, it's more about what you do on the stage, but I know that that moment can sometimes be a little bit awkward and leave us all feeling uncertain. So a simple thank you for your time and leaving is really the best way to approach it. Auditions are generally looked at as an awkward and somewhat intimidating experience, and they can be for everybody, but I, my belief is that everybody in the room wants a successful experience, both, both for you and for the table, and that we're all kind of in that room cheering you on in those moments. For you as the person coming into the room to know that is a really important thing for you to feel confident. My hope is that through being able to think through some of these tips and work with some of these tips that we can take what is that um, auditioning from a stressful, intimidating experience and turn it into a confidence and very successful experience for you.